Good afternoon, Packers fans. Aaron Negler here with your Packers Daily Chat. Coming to you live on the Cheesehead TV social channels. Slow news day, huh? What a last 24 hours for the green and gold as they shape their roster heading into 2024. Started late Sunday afternoon with the news that Devondre Campbell would be released on Wednesday, given a June 1st designation. Uh, and then today arrived in holy Toledo, Ryan Gutekunst off to the races. Um, clearly, there's a lot to get to. Got a lot of questions already in the chat. Um, I just want to say this is the beginning of a new era of Packers football. It is very clear that Brian Gutekunst is com taking complete ownership of this roster and moving forward, much like he did last season, going with an extreme youth movement on offense. I'm not thinking that's going to be continued as far as like trying to mirror that on defense, but it's very clear that he is setting up what he hopes is going to be a long-term window of contention. And with that comes some tough choices. I think the A number one headline of the day, no question about it, is the release of Aaron Jones. We know that they were trying to work with Rosenhaus, Jones's agent, about potentially lowering his cap hit. Probably got to think some discussion about a pay, a potential pay cut was in that mix. And after Jones took a pay cut last offseason, which, by the way, if you'll remember, brought them right down to the wire at the start of free agency, where it did look like he was going to be hitting the open market. After that happened last season, it was hard to imagine Rosenhaus allowing a client to take a pay cut for a second year in a row. Apparently, the Packers signing Josh Jacobs from the Raiders, getting younger at the position. Jacobs still only 26. Jones, obviously, a little bit older having missed a lot of time last season due to injuries. Brian undoubtedly following the creed, always better to get out a year too early rather than a year too late. Could probably make the argument maybe last year was a year too early, but no doubt about it, Packers trying to get younger across the board, but especially at the running back spot, trying to improve the youth and explosiveness at the position. There's no doubt that Aaron Jones made an absolute difference to this Packers offense when he was on the field. But when he was on the field was the caveat for both Jones and David Bakhtiari. Bakhtiari obviously going through hell trying to get back on the field the last two seasons and has been unable to do so at a regular rate. Going, moving away from both of them, is a, those are tough choices, but that's what Brian is paid to do. And I know it's not going to sit well with a lot of Packers fans, understandably so. I'm one of you. I am absolutely gutted that Aaron Jones will probably not be a Green Bay Packer next season. And I say probably because there is still a very slight sliver of a window that Jones could get out on the open market and find the, you know, offerings less than desirable. There's a chance, but I am pretty sure he's probably going to get snatched up here on the open market pretty soon. And the Packers have to, you know, adapt win different ways. Yes, Aaron Jones was dynamite when he came back from injuries last off or last season. But I'll remind you, the Packers beat both the Lions and the Chiefs with Aaron Jones sitting on the sidelines. There are other ways to win, and there are plenty of other ways to win. Aaron Jones is an all-time great. He's going to go down as an absolute Packers legend. Salute everything he did for the green and gold. Packers are moving on. They're looking forward. And I know a lot of, again, a lot of fans will be mad, but I'm sure a lot of them are probably similar to the people that were mad when Brian drafted Jordan Love when he did. And that seems to be working out. Let's see what happens here in the offensive backfield, the Packers offense in general, especially the running back spot. Excited for the draft. You got to think they'll be definitely looking to draft a back or two. A lot of ball game left. A lot of ball game left. Hello to everybody in the comment section. So good to see everybody. Everyone mixing it up. we got a lot of super chats already. Let me get to them for you. Merkel, what's going on, man? Nags, I thought it was about the people toasting a carry the G to 33. Man, well, that's what uh, Aaron Rodgers said, and we all saw how his dalliance as a GM paid off in New York in 2023. Pack Daddy, how you doing, man? Anywhere but Dallas, please. Yeah, I kind of joked about it on Twitter, but I think it's a very real possibility. You got to think the Cowboys have Rosenhaus on speed dial to inquire about their tormentor, Aaron Jones, and how much would Aaron Jones love to play in that building full time? 
I mean, the man always goes off at Jerry World. If he's doing that eight games a year, Lord have mercy. Although you could make you know, the snide comment that, well, it's Mike McCarthy, so all Mike does is ignore Aaron Jones. But I think there's enough pelts on the wall from Jones at this point that he won't be able to ignore him. Panic button. What a handle. Thanks for the super chat. I'm sad. I'm happy. I'm sad. I'm happy. Going to need to double up the anxiety slash depression meds today. Well, um, caveat, this is a chat that I am reading. I would never joke about such things, but yeah, you, pro you probably will, man. Jay Fly, what's up, man? Xavier McKinney! How about Brian Gutekunst opening up the checkbook? 68 million, four-year deal, 25 million in the first year, getting their top target in free agency at the safety spot. Absolutely 1,000% home run signing. You absolutely love to see it. Completely resetting the back end of this defense. Definitely found your post safety for Jeff Halfley. But here's the thing. He's not just a deep guy. He can play up by the line of scrimmage. He is physical enough. He has got at least the explosiveness and the fluidity you like to play in the slot. I love this signing. I didn't think they were probably going to be able to pull this off. But, man, happy. Happy to be proven wrong. And uh, Brian cooking with some gas there with that signing. No question about it. Smalls, what's up, man? I'm old enough to remember TT's wild rides. I mean, I was just joking on the radio. That we Gone are the days where I could just book my vacation the first week of free agency because you were always sure that the Packers wouldn't be doing anything. Brian came out swinging a little bit today. No doubt about it. Quinn, what's going on, man? Roller coaster of emotions today. Pump for the Xavier signing. The Jacobs and Jones news feels like the Jimmy Graham and Jordy Nelson news from 2018. Ooh, good pull. Um, I I was thinking about there was the day when they signed Martellus Bennett because the Packers had had some you know bad or negative news like an hour earlier, and then everyone celebrated Martellus Bennett signing. We all know how that turned out. You never really know how these free agent signings are going to work, right? But yeah, it, it was a gut punch of a day. And then followed by some exaltation and followed by sadness. So, man, Ryan Gutekunst making it happen. Pulling Packers heartstrings every which way. John Simitovich, what's going on, man? Today in a quote, I'm in a glass case of emotion. Yeah, man, I, I feel you. See, I love it when people with the Packers text me while I'm live. Like, yo. On the air. Love it. Love it. Um, Braden, what's going on, man? At least the D can lay the D on D Swift. Welcome back to hell. <laughs> That's uh, quite a way to look at it. And yes, the Bears striking immediately this morning in free agency uh, with the Devondre Swift signing coming from the Eagles after, I believe, one year in Philadelphia. I mean, he's talented, but yeah, it's not like I'm losing sleep. Let's put it like Let's put it like that. Gary, what's going on, man? Bakhtiari, fierce, fun, and the flashiest middle finger in the NFL. No doubt about it, man. Shout out to Dave. You guys know I said it in the video earlier today. I'll reiterate it here. Huge fans of Dave here at Cheesehead TV. Uh, I had a quick back and forth with him earlier this afternoon. Hopefully, I'm going to get him here on Cheesehead TV later in the week, and we can chat it up. But um, absolute legend. No question about it. Robin, thanks for being a Care of the G Club member, brother. Tell the Packers to stop, but also keep going. Somehow do both. Just do something. <laughs> I think that's exactly what they're doing, right? They're stopping. They're starting. They're toying with your emotions. They're bringing you to the highest highs and then tearing you down the moment you get excited. I mean, how about that hour where we had visions of Josh Jacobs and Aaron Jones in a backfield together dancing in our heads? That was a lot of fun. I'll I'll think back on that hour very fondly. No question about it. I'll be like 85 in a home somewhere telling people, you know, there was that hour, that one day in 2024, where we almost had Aaron Jones and Josh Jacobs in the backfield together. And again, it could still it's a still a very small chance, very small chance that it could still happen. Memories, man. Memories. Mike Witt, what's up? Hoping and praying 33 doesn't sign with the Cowboys. Mike, you and me both, man. You and me both. 
Jay Flay, what's up, man? As for 33, not mad, not happy, just bummed. I think that's legit, man. I think a lot of people are probably in that camp. Lots of Packers fans have a lot to work through when it comes to moving forward, thanking Jones for what he did, dealing with the fact that you're really disappointed that he's not going to be around, especially after your general manager said into a microphone, oh, yeah, he's going to be back. It doesn't look like he's going to be back, Brian. Pretty interesting. Pretty interesting. Marshall, thanks for the super chat, man. Any chance of re-signing Jones for a two- or three-year deal? Isn't it a significant cap hit with this release? Um, Somewhat significant. I, nothing they can't handle because of the Bakhtiar release and other things they've done to open up cap space, including the release of Devondre Campbell, making it a June 1st designation, which opens up $10 million additional dollars in cap space, etc. Is it a possibility? It's a minimal one. I think it's a, it's a very small chance. I suspect he's going to find someone out in the market who will pay him probably a little bit more than the Packers were willing to go. That's my guess. Now, maybe his age and the fact that he is coming off a season that he was so banged up, perhaps that helps the Packers enough to have him hit the market and go, okay, you know what? This is probably the best pace for me. I'm not going to get a better deal than this, etc. Maybe it happens. I don't know if a two- or three-year deal, maybe a one-year deal, but. Uh, Again, I think the chances of that happening are pretty slim. I'm not saying it's impossible. Just pretty slim. She said, Joey, what's going on, man? As it's setting in, I understand the Jones move now. I mean, I think that's the thing, right? If you look at it purely dispassionately, you can make the case for it. I don't love it, but I'm a you know emotional fan. But it completely dispassionately, coming off the year he had, I understand. Um, we're having trouble streaming to Facebook, it says. This may be an issue on Facebook's end. Is it possible the stream was ended or deleted on Facebook? Not on my end, people. So um sorry to the Facebook crew if you're not getting the stream, but uh is not my uh, not my fault, I promise. Um, what else we got here, folks? Cheeto, what's going on, man? Damn it, agony, Jones, damn curses. This is awful. Deep breath. So anyway, Josh Jacobs is pretty exciting, huh? Looking forward to next season. Let's keep the good times rolling. You done good, Jones. Yeah, I mean, that is part of the gig, right? In with the old, out with the new, and or was that the other way around? <laughs> it's been a long day, people. It's been a long day. Jocelyn, how are you? My fandom is selfish in that I want Green Bay to win for my happiness, but 33 and 69 are transcendental. And I simultaneously wanted them to win for their happiness. All-time great Green Bay Packer and genuinely great dudes. That was the bit in Bakhtiari's tweet or message to you know the fans and the public in general that really got me, man. The, the one where he says, I always wanted to win a Lombardi on Lombardi Avenue. And here's the thing. I remember when he came over to Corey's house pre-pandemic, I want to say 2019 maybe, uh, that training camp, he came over and did a podcast with us. And I remember we were joking about like, oh, what do you want them to do and blah, 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 like free agency or draft wise and or what, you know, what are you looking for? And he was like, man, whatever helps us win a Super Bowl. That's all I care about. And that was years ago. Right. I got to imagine that the frustration is so in, in, I mean, I can't fathom how frustrating the last few years have been for David. Um, but that's the thing. Right. He wanted to win it. In Green Bay with the Packers. And obviously, you guys know it's well documented. Everything that went that transpired since the injury. It's a tough, tough, tough gig. Dustin, what's up? As an armchair fan, I don't like it, but that's why I'm an armchair fan and not a GM. I say it all the time, man. I, you know, I have all these opinions, and people ask me all the time, like, what would you do? I'm like, you don't want me as the general manager. I would be the worst general manager because I would sign everybody. I'd overpay. I'd be sentimental about aging veterans the ability to be dispassionate and make these choices are what make brian a good general manager and yes i know there are people that disagree with that sentiment that is fine i'll continue to say it brian is a good general manager I'm not saying great I'm not saying hall of fame worthy he's a good general manager and he continues to build his team i'm excited to watch it continue 
She said, Joey, what's up, man? Just hoping Aaron Jones to the Texans. Exactly. Let him play in Texas. I'm all for it. Just not in Jerry world, not for the Cowboys, not against potentially the Packers in a playoff situation. Could you fucking imagine that? No, no, thank you. Portmaster, what's up, man? The Packers are in every conversation. I am the conversation, Goody, probably. He certainly took over a little bit today. Look, he is in the catbird seat when it comes to the draft already with his, you know, five picks. What is it in the first in the top 100? And now today he drove a lot of the narrative on free agency. Pretty, uh, pretty interesting stuff from the Packers GM. Joe, what's going on, man? Over two years, Packers have parted ways with Adams, Rogers, Bakhtiari and Jones. Yet they'll be expected to have an elite offense. Pretty amazing. That's what happens when you have a program. You don't just collect guys. You don't just sign people, right? You don't just make moves to make them or because like it's going to be a big signing name-wise, etc. You have a plan. You have a program. Everyone working in concert. And it does feel like we've got some concert work in here with the triangle. I know we've talked about a disconnect at times, but sure feels like, you know, Brian, Matt, especially Mark, obviously, all on the same page here, moving towards something. It's exciting times in Green Bay, no question. Um, Chris, what's going on? Bring back Ted Thompson off seasons, LOL, hashtag heart attack. Yeah, today was not for the faint of heart on Twitter, I'll tell you that. Constantly refreshing and then seeing these moves, your heart does kind of skip a beat, right? Like not, not for the faint, no doubt. Mike, how are you, man? Goo woke up and today and said, you know what would be fun if I broke the emotional stability of the entire fan base over a four-hour period? I'm sure that's exactly what he said, waking up, pouring his coffee and said, let's go to work. Ed, what's going on, man? Feel the same way about Aaron Jones as Devontae Adams. Wish him the very best. Lots of highlights from him. Absolutely. Look, the whole idea, right, when you watched Devontae Adams get traded and now when you watch Aaron Jones get released, they are great players. You hate to see great players walk out the door. But hopefully you can, you know, develop or find your own great players. That's what Brian's trying to do. And I would say the early returns from the last couple drafts, these they at least got some seeds in the ground, right? There's some potential greatness on the Packers roster to take the place of these other past greats. That's what it's all about. Continuing to move forward, continuing to look forward, building a contending window. Tanner, what's going on? I absolutely love both moves. Jacobs is a younger Jones. McKinney is far and away better than Savage. I love Jones, but both moves are upgrades. Now, I'm not ready to say Jacobs is an absolute upgrade on Jones. He's younger. There's no doubt about it. He's certainly coming off a disappointing season with the Raiders. Now, that can't be denied. But where I will agree with you is his youth and the potential for, you know, getting a, at least like two or three productive years out of him at a very high level. I think the chances of that happening are pretty good, right? Whereas with Jones, who knows, man, approaching 30, hitting 30, coming off a bunch of injuries. You know, that you always kind of balance him and his usage and all these games, et cetera. Man, I get it. I get it. Uh, I I do think there could could have been a way forward with Jones, and who knows? Maybe there still is. But, yeah, I think it's the, the moves make sense. That's the thing. I like If it was something where I was completely flabbergasted, that would be one thing. But that would make it a lot harder to swallow. But the moves make sense as a dispassionate observer. Danny, what's going on, man? Gudikins requires a wheelbarrow when he walks. Gudikins bows to mere mortal by FaceTiming in on every conversation, Goot. A lot going on there, Danny G, and I appreciate you being a Care the G Club member. Ben, hello from across the pond. How are you, man? I'm in a glass case of emotion. Don't know how to feel. Excited, yet sad. Well, look, here's the thing. All right, I'm glad you brought this up because I get it because of the world we live in now, right? where we watch roster construction happen in real time. We are given these updates as they happen, as things are agreed to or moves are made. You could always, if you are so inclined as a Packers fan, sit back, let things take their course, and then just see what the team looks like come August in training camp. But I know we're all 
fucking nuts in the head and are unable to do that. I, I understand. And thank God for that, because that allows me to have a me to have a job. Soto, what's going on, man? No Jones makes a bitter, angry little man. Signing free agent running backs has not been a Packer strength. Cedric Benson was the last, quote, major free agent running back. Yeah, but Benson wasn't signed to be the guy long term. You know that. I feel that feels disingenuous there, Soder. Um, but I feel you, man, simply because Jones is so great when he's on the field. I think you're mostly bitter because they didn't ride Jones into the ground like we wanted him to. But that's why you and I tap on the internet and they actually coach people. Matt, what's going on, man? Any thoughts on Jacobs and if he can play a similar similar role as Jones or will he be expected to be more of a workhorse? TBD, this is what I was just talking about as far as like letting things play out as far as roster construction. I would be absolutely shocked if they don't draft one, if not two running backs in this draft. And who knows? They may still sign another running back, although I tend to doubt that. I don't see anybody in Green Bay ever being a true workhorse, right? And yes, this does feel suspiciously like a fantasy football question. I don't see him ever, anyone, being a true workhorse per se. But I think he'll get a decent share of the load. I think he's talented as hell. He's still only 26 years old. And I think he's still dynamic enough to be a featured back. But I do think, again, they're going to have a rotation. Brian talked about it. Matt's talked about it. I don't think you're ever going to see the days of like Edron James in Indianapolis taking the lion's share of the load at the running back spot. That's just not the NFL norm. And I don't think that's going to happen in Green Bay either. Jocelyn, what's up? Two more thoughts on Bach. What if no ACL tear for Bulaga and first start at San Francisco versus all pro Smith brothers wasn't a train wreck? Thought they might have something. Yeah, I hear you. Man, that's a, there's a lot of what ifs. There's a lot of sliding doors when you talk about Bakhtiari. And there's a lot of sliding doors when you talk about injuries in general. No doubt. Packers, what's going on? I like the low guarantee for the Jacobs deal. Yeah, I saw the initial numbers. I haven't seen kind of the breakdown of the contract yet, though. And that's a well placed uh, comment here because remember, we're seeing the McKinney numbers, we're seeing now the initial Jacobs numbers, et cetera. Just hold off, wait until we see the actual breakdowns of the contract, because oftentimes this is going to be, you know, a four year deal, quote unquote, that's really a two year deal. And then we'll see. And the Packers will have the most likely opportunity to get out of it. Most NFL deals kind of break down that way these days. But I know agents like to trumpet the big numbers and that's what gets out there. But um, the guarantees, what's what's kind of broken down as far as what is guaranteed and things of that nature. That'll come out hopefully in the next day or two. M, what's up, man? I had just hung a new 33 picture on my wall. <laughs> it really hurts, but Goot got balls, and I totally trust his way of handling business. Go, Pack, go. It's a healthy attitude, M. Thanks for being a Care of the G Club member, man. Kalo, what's going on? Afternoon, all. Sad day, but also happy. Aaron Jones was my favorite Aaron. Go, Pack, go. Oh, thanks. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Thanks for being a Care of the G Club member. Appreciate you, man. Andrew Ware, how are you, buddy? Hats off to 69. Truly carried the G. Could not agree more. And if you're one of those yahoos out there, it was like, go Bakhtiar was stealing money or all that. You are just proclaiming your ignorance publicly. That's all you're doing. Not that you are, Andrew. I know you're saluting the man. I'm just seeing some of it start to trickle through with the old timeline and comment sections. And I'm like, y'all are just ignorant. Rai Rai, what's going on? Glish, Bach, Jones, Adams, Aaron Rodgers, core got a ring. So do the Packers. That was the whole idea, right? The whole reason they kept the band together. The whole reason they kicked the can. Just didn't happen. And you got to think, yes, Bakhtiari is really freak practice in, in, uh, in practice. His injury in practice back in 2020 went a long way to making sure that never happened. You hate it. It sucks. But it's the truth. Smalls, what's up, man? Does this mean a Josh Jacobs, Braylon Allen, Thunder and Lightning setup? <laughs> I was just talking about this on the radio. Yeah, man, I've been saying it before, and I'll keep saying it. Braylon Allen's absolutely in play on day three of the draft. No question about it. Ralph, what's up? Do you think we're done signing? Possibly, but hey, I also wouldn't be surprised if we get a rap sheet tweet at 8 p.m. tonight with another signing, possibly like a linebacker. Who knows? 
Uh, I don't. I doubt it. Let's say. Let's put it that way. I doubt. It. Peter Lower, what's going on, man? How are the running backs in the second and third round? Good, mostly because that's where the bulk of the talent is probably slated to be. As far as there's not going to be a ton of action at running back, you know, in the first round. There's a lot of talent uh, throughout the draft, but specifically day two and three, no question about it. Um, I'm all in on Brooks from Texas, but I doubt they use a second round pick on him, which is what they'd probably have to do. Adam, what's going on, man? Bach, what a way to end a Packer career, a sensual wave, flipping the bird and crushing the bears. I mean, yeah, what a way to go out, right? The fact that that was his final game in a Packers uniform is just outstanding. Literally flipping Bears fans off while the Packers decimate the Bears in Soldier Field. Chef's kiss. No notes. Absolutely love it. Ruben, thanks for the super chat, man. What do you feel is the next move for these Packers? Honestly, draw drop today for the good and bad. I think they'll look at running back. I'm not sorry, running back at linebacker. I think they'll look at linebacker. I'll be very surprised if they don't add to that room at some point in free agency. Now, not necessarily today slash early in the free agency period, but there is zero doubt in my mind that they will address that room. They cannot go into the draft as currently situated. I'd be absolutely shocked. So that's what I would be on the lookout for timing wise. When, how much, I don't know but they'll sign a linebacker at some point. Um, Dean D Lenore 84. What's up? Is Xavier McKinney going to be what 26 was supposed to be? Probably honestly. And look, that's what free agency is for. That's what you want it to be used for misses in the drafts, holes in your roster, talent level, maybe sagging a little bit, boost it with free agency paper over those cracks a little bit. And the fact that, you know, what is McKinney, like 24 years old, coming off his first contract, you know, the Giants wanted to re-sign him and just couldn't make it work financially. And he knew there was a market out there for him. And he guessed right, or his agents did. Um, yeah, no question about it. Uh, he's going to be a noticeable upgrade. Let's say, Let's put it that way. Sandy, thanks for the super chat. Appreciate it. Release of 33 has made me sick. I'm not going to be irrational. I'm not going to be rational for a long time. It's understandable. We get emotionally attached, right? And the way he carried himself, the way Aaron Jones represented himself as a member of the Green Bay Packers only endears us to him more. I can't imagine how, you know, tough this has got to be for him, given everything he has done for, you know, not just the organization, but for the community throughout Green Bay, Wisconsin. I mean, we partnered with him a, a couple of times on his uh, youth football camps in the Green Bay area, the stuff he had done with his foundation. I mean, there's no way you, you can sit there and say, you know, he didn't give his all both on and off the field for the Green Bay Packers and to the Green Bay community. And so, yeah, it becomes really hard to kind of swallow that pill that is the you know, tough choices that the Packers have to make football-wise. Uncultured, thanks for the super chat. Not sure I should be simmering brats in IPA, but we're living in a whole new world today. Let's fucking go. All gas, no fucking brakes. Uncultured, you are one of a kind, man. I love it. Wombat mode. Thanks for the super chat. In with the old, out with the new is the Jets motto. <laughs> that's fair. That was my slip of the tongue earlier, and that's pretty perfect uh, to describe how they operate at one Jets way. Nick Perez. Thanks to Super Chat. How do you think the players feel about 33 leaving? They're not thrilled, but they know it's a business. Nobody's really surprised at this point in the NFL when guys get cut and moved on from. It's a harsh, tough reality. They don't like it, but they know it's part of the biz, and they know it can come for them at any moment. Kevin, what's going on, man? Jones and Jacobs' backfield dreams lasted as long as our rebuild. <laughs> It was a great hour, man. It was a great hour. Matthew, how are you, man? I just seen a post that we are expected to sign Xavier McKinney. What do you think of it? Yeah, I saw that post too, buddy. Uh, they are absolutely signing Xavier McKinney, and I think it's a phenomenal signing. Uh, one of the best free agent signings of Brian's tenure. I think he's going to come in and completely revitalize the back end of the Packers defense. You're going to look at the Packers defense a lot differently with McKinney on the field. He's an excellent addition. Mike Witt, what's going on, man? 
With 33 gone, I hope we grab Blake Corum in the draft. Oh, he is in play. Love this kid. And I don't want to hear of, oh, he's got all this, you know, tread on the tires, whatever, blah, blah, blah. I don't care. Love this kid. I want him in green gold, which means it probably won't happen. Cheeto, what's going on? Piggybacking on other comments, our offense will sizzle still. We are lucky fans. I'm so hopeful we have the defense to go with it. It's a big part of it, right? Big part of anything that's going to be successful in Green Bay is figuring out the fucking defense. As Soder has so often pointed out, we have been going on the now 30 years. We've had maybe two or three viable defenses in that time. Three out of 30. It's got to be done, man. Menace. How you doing? Adding Xavier and a five and adding Xavier and five top 100 picks to the youngest team in the NFL without with playoff experience. I think the NFC has officially been put on notice. And they're heading in the right direction. Now they got to do something with those five picks, and they got to hit on them, or at least you know package some and go up and get somebody, and maybe that hits, etc. But man, yes, they are positioned to become a force. Given what they've done in the draft the last two years, if they can add to that, plus what they've dabbled with so far in free agency, feels good. Feels like a window opening up. We've got a ways to go yet, though. Brother Love, thanks for being a Carry the G Club member. I'm excited about this coming season. 33 hurts, but it will feel less painful when they're hosting, hoisting that Lombardi. Hashtag goals. Imagine that. Not only hoisting the Lombardi, but then turning around and having the draft in Green Bay and getting the 32nd pick. Come on now. Let's go. Ryan, thanks for the super chat. I like Jones, but your best ability is your availability. Oof. Tough love from Ryan Willie. I mean, you're not incorrect, but damn. Mimsy, what's going on, man? The team today doesn't collapse against San Francisco. Go Pack Go. All right, all right. Now, maybe, sure, but the team today also you know, doesn't play on Sunday. So long way to go, long way to go. And who knows what transpires for both of those teams. You know, the teams that set foot on the field in the divisional round will be very, very different when they take the field in 2024. John Simitovich, what's going on, man? At 8 a.m., I thought I was going to make fun of the Bears and their stadium fiasco. Losing Jones and Box sucks, but these signings are fantastic. I'm glad you brought up the Bears. How funny is it to watch the Bears kind of play you know, do si do with their stadium situation. And now, oh, we'll, we'll put in, but we need public money for this dome on the lake. Y'all are hilarious in Chicago. Love it. Glenn, what's going on, man? I wanted the Packers to be players in free agency for years. With today's roller coaster, I miss Ted Thompson. Any rumors of a linebacker signing? Nothing yet, Glenn. But like I said a little bit earlier, I'll be shocked if they don't come out of free agency with some kind of you know, signing at linebacker, maybe even two. Um, I don't necessarily think it's going to happen right away, but I do think that's coming. Adam, what's going on, man? Only a few months away from the why are we not using Jacobs comments? Can't wait. I'm really excited. Don Vito. Well, Nags, I've aged out of the Packers. Still my team, same as always, but after Bach and Jones are gone, I've hit that point. You know, that point. I don't know that point. Aging out of the pack. I don't know. I'm not familiar with this phrase, sir. I'm not familiar with this concept. I'm going to be a Packers fan till I'm 99 or may 105. I don't age out. This is what Corey and I always talk about. You know, man, we, we it's like that line in Dune. Our plans are measured in terms of centuries. Like the Packers have more championships than anybody else. That's just a fact. They've won more football games than anybody else. That's just a fact. Like I look in the terms of the hundred year history, I'm along for whatever, you know, chapters are unfolding going forward within that history that is always expanding and always continuing. I don't age out of the Packers. My God, if anything, I enjoy the richness, the continued fascination with what's next. How are they going to, you know, figure out how to get to a Super Bowl with Jordan Love? I'm all in on this journey. I love it so much. I'm gutted that Bakhtiari and Jones are leaving, but, but the Packers are eternal, man. Come on. Badger, what's going on, man? Thanks for the super chat. Did Jones not want to take a pay cut? Why not pair both? 
We'll never know, but what do I know is Jacobs is younger, and I love the move we made at safety. Do you think that if Cooper kid slides, we take him? Love you, Jones. Go Pack Go. A uh, couple of things there. Um, did Joe's not want to take a pay cut? Well, we don't officially know if they asked if they asked him to take a pay cut. That's the assumption, right? But who knows? Um, I'm sure when he signs with whoever he ends up signing with, he'll be asked about these things, and maybe we'll get a little illumination. Um, as for Cooper, yes. 100% yes. Even with the Xavier McKinney signing, yes. I, I suspect if he's there at 25, they take him. Outlaw, what's going on, man? It's all for the better if we get Jones back cool. If not, we open some cap space and we upgrade it at safety. Take it as a win today. We will see, though. That's a reasonable uh, reasonable viewpoint there, buddy. Mimsy, how you doing, man? How does Jones cut impact the Door County economy? <laughs> I don't know. Isn't that more of an A.J. Dillon question? Which, by the way, A.J. Dillon, uh, on, on his way out as well, the running back room is going to look very different in Green Bay in 2024. Dustin, what's going on, man? Lost in all the excitement and not unexpected at all. Runyon and Savage signed elsewhere. Yes, Savage signed with Jacksonville. And Runyon, as anyone who was listening to Carry the G Radio, the podcast last week, knows, Billy and I talked about it. You know, the report was out there that Rosenhaus and the Packers were in discussions about possibly retaining him. Man, you just knew the second he got to the market, he was going to get a starter's deal, which is exactly what happened here in New York with the Giants. The Packers were never going to give him that kind of deal. And Rosenhaus knew that, you know, so... I understand it. I, it's a business decision, especially on Runyon's part. I have no doubt the Packers would have liked to have him back on a cheaper deal, but there was there was just no way. Once he hit the market, it was over. Not surprised at all. Patrick, thanks for the super sticker. Appreciate you. Marshall Duke, thank you. Just saw $12.5 million guaranteed for Jacobs. There you go. 12.5. I'll take that. One year. I mean, the guarantee, most likely, for the first year smalls what's up man the field saga is getting interesting is it is it i don't know man i have a real hard time thinking of a bears quarterback hovering around the word interesting that's just me uh, that's just how i roll pack owner mt what's going on man well, it doesn't hurt as bad as jordy it sucks to lose these players that bled green and gold they carried the g well go pack go it's well stated, man. 100% true. Clutch, what's going on, man? Trusting Goot and Ball. Thank you, 33 and 69. Go, Pack, go. Well stated. Kalo, thanks again, man. Goot, we trust. Go, Pack, go. It's all this Gootikins love. I love it. Continuing, Scotty P. Goot built the log cabin he was born in. <laughs> A lot going on. That's like an Escher sketch right there. U.S. Marines, what's going on? We're the Packers. Why are we being active in free agency? Hashtag trust the process. Unusual, right? Well, you know, they were able to open up space. The Jones, Bakhtiari, and Campbell moves gives them a lot of leeway. Gives them a lot to play with. No question about it. Porkmaster, how you doing, man? That we kicked, like that can we kicked found its way home. I guess it came back last year, but what a job by the office. Just thinking about last year's rebuild that wasn't. I mean, that's the thing. Think about teams that have gone through the wilderness. Think about Tampa Bay. Everyone talked about Tampa Bay when Tom Brady went there and won a Super Bowl, right? But what do they have to do to get there? They went through a decade of garbage. The Packers, their rebuild lasted mm, about six games. I know which method I prefer. Now, yes, Jordan Love has to go and hopefully lead them to a Super Bowl. But that's the idea, right? That you don't go through decades of ineptitude that you are able to turn it around somewhat quickly. And I think it probably would have even been quicker had they not kicked the can trying to get to another Super Bowl with Aaron Rodgers. But man, Packers fans, you have it so good. You have it so good. You don't even know. Danny, what's going on, man? For years, fans have cried at the lack of moves at free agency. Now the day is here and they cry for TT to rise from the grave. Can't have nice things. Okay, that's extreme. And I think, you know, probably some outliers. I don't think most Packers fans are in that camp. I'm, I've seen some of what you're suggesting here, but I think most people understand what's going on here. I think most Packers fans appreciate their approach. I just, uh, you know, 
it's unusual in these parts of late. Jack, what's going on, man? I'm ready to watch 69 block for a series and a half as a jet, only to have him sit and watch that O-line implode. I need a new mock draft now, too. Man, I, I'm i ready to watch David Bakhtiari play football, period. I love watching him ball out. That's it. Legless, what's going on, man? I don't want to live in the past, but imagine McKinney against the 49ers actually tackling Christian McCaffrey. So excited. You don't want to live in the past, but here you go, living in the past. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But yeah, man, I don't think uh, McCaffrey busts that 20-plus yard touchdown if McKinney's back there. Autumn G, how are you? Thanks for the super chat. Who do you see stepping up as the new leader if Jones doesn't return? Yes, I'm still praying for a miracle in his return. It's understandable. I totally get, you know, putting your belief there. As far as new leaders, you know, I think Jordan Love is already becoming a natural leader. There's no doubt that he's going to lead by example. He's never going to be a big rah-rah guy. I think we've seen that. But you certainly saw, and Brian alluded to this at the Combine, how guys play for him, how guys react to him, how guys want him to succeed, and they want to help him succeed. I think that's a natural leader right there, a guy who doesn't have to say too much for guys to gravitate to him. And I think part of that's like kind of innate, right? I think you saw that grow over time this season. Um, but we'll see. Who knows? We'll we'll find out probably as the offseason goes along, get into training camp. Some guys will probably rise to that mantle. Of that, there's little doubt. CBFJ, thanks for the super chat. I met Aaron Jones on an Appleton Denver flight in January. He promised he'd be back, but I guess he did hire Drew. Gracious guy, gonna miss the sombrero. Still wonder why he flew coach. Go back, go. You fly coach because you want to keep that money. Yeah. Guys fly coach all the time. And yes, I mean, look, Aaron thought he'd be back. Brian thought he'd be back. So far, doesn't look like that's going to happen. Nicholas, what's going on, man? Bakhtiari's knee cost us two chips. Injuries suck and sucks to see him leave. I'm never going to say it cost him two outright, but I'm pretty confident it cost them at least one. Let's put that right there. Jordan, how are you, man? How long until Jets... Assistant GM Joe Douglas announces 33 and 69 to the Jets. Whew, baby. I don't know if I can handle Aaron Jones in the Jets uniform. Bakhtiari, I expect it. I won't be surprised. Aaron Jones, I can't, I can't handle that. Andrew Ware, what's going on, man? Jacobs and McKinney more exciting than the Smiths? I think so. That's just me, but yeah, I think so. I think McKinney, especially in a new scheme, Packers fans haven't seen yet. And then, you know, down in, down out, competent safety play, something we haven't really enjoyed a lot in Green Bay uh, last year, a couple years. Yeah, and then you couple that with Jacobs, who is still, I think, pretty damn explosive, pretty damn talented. I'm with it, man. Steve Snyder, thanks for the super chat. God bless you, Nagler. We plan in centuries. We're here for the journey. Build around love. Packers forever. You had me tearing up, sir. Next man up. Steve, didn't mean to make you cry, but... It's just how I roll. It's how I view it. How I've always viewed it. Oh, people be calling me while I'm live. Oh, it's my daughter. Hold on. Get rid of that. Uh, What else we got? She said, Joey, what's going on, man? When they said they really liked Emmanuel Wilson and that he will get a shot at running back two, this isn't what I envisioned. (laughs) Well, here's the thing. I mean, still going to get through the draft, right? There's going to be a, going to be some time. It'll be some time. Podcast, what's going on? It's only right that we draft Braylon Allen now. I think it's a possibility. I don't think there's, you know, anybody that thinks the Packers aren't going to add a running back or two in the draft, and Allen could be in that mix, no doubt about it. Joe, what's up, man? So we can go back to hating Drew Rosenhaus? You have my blessing. Krista, thanks for being a Carry the G Club member. I can't even pretend to be excited right now. My heart is broken. I trust Goody, but he has now cut my faves in Jordy and Jones. Yeah, that's part of the gig. Especially if you want to stay relevant and good and forward-thinking and forward-looking, right? I understand. I get it. At some point, though, Father Time is undefeated. And good GMs are going to get out earlier rather than later. That's just how, That is just the nature of the beast. Mimsy, what's up? I feel like Minnesota's in for a Herschel Walker level splash. Oh, God. 
they got a they got a lot going on there. And there's look, that's a GM who is also facing, you know, the need to turn the page and build his own team. It's going to be tough now that uh, their quarterback has left the building. Fascinated to see what they do. No doubt about it. All right, everybody. I got to get going. I cannot thank you enough for hanging out, talking Packers each and every day, Monday through Friday, right here on the Cheesehead TV social channels. Please do me a monster favor. Hit like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and then tell your friends and tell your family, Cheesehead TV, we are devoted to Green Bay Packers fans worldwide. Thanks a lot, everybody. Have a great night. Go Pack Go. 